with our tile map set and ready to go, we now have something for the player to run around. So we have our play space essentially. What we want to do now is return to the player class and we're going to go through the uh, the movement and the animation setup. So we're going to flesh that system out a little bit more. So back inside of the BP underscore player base, we want the event tick again. So where possible, obviously we want to try and avoid the event tick calling a lot of functions constantly. Some things like the animation and checking certain states, we will want to be pretty much updated constantly so we get that immediate feedback. So we will be driving this off of the event tick. This is the kind of thing which is going to be so uh, lightweight that it's really not going to add any uh, kind of performance bearing here. Now really what we want to do, there's going to be two different things that we want to be constantly checking and updating on the event tick. We're going to want to control the player's animation based on the current movement status in, whether they're in the air, in the ground, idle, moving, and so on. We're also going to want to update the player's animation based on the direction that they're moving or the input that the player is pressing. So to do this, because we know we have those two main things we want to check, I'll run this first of all off of a sequence. So basically we're going to have our movement sequence and our rotation sequence. We can add a reroute node here if we wanted. Sometimes it's nice to kind of self-document as you go along so we know that when we come back, we'll leave a comment here and we'll say that this will be our rotation. So a nice simple comment just to remind us what we're doing as we go through. For the movement though, this is going to be the, uh, the, or the animation based on the movement. This will be the slightly more complex thing. I'm going to run through this in two stages. We'll be fleshing out at this stage the very basic rudimentary implementation that we can get into the event tick so that we can very quickly visualize what's happening. And then we're going to go back a little bit later and we will refine this with a slightly better approach. But I wanted to show both approaches so that we can see why one will kind of automate the task for us a little bit better. So to begin with, what we want to do is start checking all of the possible states that we can be in, in regards to how the player is moving around. So first we can run this off of an initial branch and this will be checking whether or not we are grounded. So the character movement component has, again, all of this kind of tracked for us. And rather than grounded, we're actually going to check whether we are falling. Same sort of thing, but kind of reverse logic. So it has a variable being tracked whether the character is currently in a state of falling, so whether we're in the air at any given time. But if we are, what we want to do is grab our sprite, so our animation that we have going, and we're going to set the flipbook. Now we want to set the flipbook to a certain state, of course, when we're falling, so moving in the air in any way. We'll start by assuming that we are jumping, so we'll change this to FB underscore jump, and we will plug that in here. Now this is really going to cause a little bit of an issue because we've essentially got two states we want to account for, whether we're moving in a positive vertical value or a negative, so whether we are kind of reaching that apex of the jump or falling back from it. Basically, anything when you're not on the ground is classed as falling, so this isn't fully what we need at the moment, but this is a good start. Now, because we will be reusing this quite a lot, I'm going to grab from the flipbook here and promote this to a variable. I'm going to name this one fb underscore jump, and we will need all of these as variables as we go through. This is a nice easy way to set this up because now that we have that set in our slot, you'll see that it automatically assigns the fb underscore jump value to the jump animation. So we'll go through this step by step and this will kind of flesh out some of the variables that we need as well for when we return and tidy up this logic. So we're going to do another branch check here. And we want to find out if we're on the ground. So now assuming that we're not falling or rising. And again, we will return to that a little bit later and flesh this out. We'll do the ground stuff first of all, though. We will now want to know whether we're on the ground and we are moving side to side or if we're completely stationary. So quite simply, we can use the get velocity call here. So we can find the velocity that the character is moving in. We want to check whether or not this isn't equal to, so we'll get this as a length to make sure we account for any of the directions. So this will return the vector essentially as a float. And basically this will know that if we're moving left, right, forward, or back, up, or down, uh, if this returns zero, then we'll know that we're not moving in any direction whatsoever. So we can say isn't equal to, so if this float isn't equal to zero, then we know that we're moving. So this will be moving or not moving. So again, what we want to do from here, we're going to have to grab our sprite and flipbook. So I'll control W to copy this down here. And we'll do this again. So control W as we'll need to do this a third time. And hopefully you can start seeing why this isn't going to be the most ideal setup. We need to keep calling this one function over and over. It's kind of replicating logic. And again, you'll see how we can fix that quite easily in just a moment. But first of all, we'll get things that are kind of going visually. We can actually start testing this as we go along. So 
at the moment because we've got this set to nothing we need to do a few more steps before we can test but if we were to jump we can see that we get the jump animation uh, anything else is going to set this to be invisible so what we're saying is that if the velocity isn't equal to zero so if we are moving then we're going to want to set our flipbook here to be run so we'll set this to be the running flipbook we'll promote this to a variable again we'll call this one fb underscore run and we're going to do something very similar down here so this one is of course if we're not moving so we're going to set this to fb underscore idle or that is player idle just noticed a bit of a naming issue that i have there so i can go back and fix that a bit later i'm going to promote this again to a variable and that will be fb underscore idle so now we've got something which is filling those slots so we can now test this so we have our idle animation if we're not doing anything jumping animation if we're in the air and running animation when we are not stationary so of course we've not accounted for the rotation we haven't accounted for the jumping and falling but uh, they will be coming up very shortly so for the jumping and falling i'm now going to introduce you to the select node if you haven't seen this before basically what we want to do if we know that we're in some form of being in the air we don't know whether that is a positive or a negative speed that we're moving yet on the z-axis what we're going to do is we're going to unhook our fb underscore jump and we will select a flipbook depending on a certain result so we're going to get our utility select this is taking in a wild card we can change this to a few different variables by default and we want this to be the return of a boolean again so we're going to do a quick boolean check we can copy our get velocity down here we're going to check on this in a moment we can split this we're only interested this time in one of the axes uh, velocity so we'll split the structure pin we want to know whether we're moving on a positive or a negative value in the z-axis so up or down basically and what we'll do is we'll say that if this is less than or equal to a certain float, so we're going to account for the exact point we hit the apex, then we will pass that into our wildcard. That will change that to a Boolean. And we now have a check to find out whether or not we're moving vertically in a positive or negative value. This is really good because we know that this is a Boolean. We get this changed to true or false. So if this is true, so if we are less than or equal to zero, that's true, then we know that this is going to be our falling animation. And that one's named terribly. I'm going to go back and fix these now because that is worse than I expected. So FB underscore full, uh, that should be player full, and FB player jump. Okay, so that's going to make it much easier now to find in a good order here. So what I was saying is that if this is less than or equal to zero, if that is correct, then we know that we're falling. If it's false, then we know that we have a positive value and we are still jumping or we haven't yet reached that apex. So we can press play here. We'll double check that this works. So we've got jumping and falling. And that seems pretty perfect. So it just gives us that kind of um, better ideal of which way the player is moving. Uh, it gives us a little bit more of that visual feedback. It feels a bit more polished immediately that we know in which direction we are moving vertically. So I'm just going to plug this back into jump, promote this one to a new variable. And I'm happy shorthanding these names because uh, we're in the player class. This is kind of obvious what this is going to be. Uh, the naming convention here is more so that it all lines up in a nice accurate way in the uh, the content browser and it's easy to find as you saw from the list options then that is the movement setup this is the quick kind of dirty approach to getting the movement going we've now accounted for pretty much everything we have an animation for so jumping falling moving and idle they're all in here ready to go to finish this off we want to uh, address this rotation comment down here so i'm going to move these up just a little bit just to give us a little bit of space and move this down a bit more for the rotation what we want is our sprite basically there's a few different ways that we can do that we could invert the size of our sprite so facing right would be positive on the scale x here and minus one would essentially make us flip now if we have anything which is attached to our character if anything has like a projectile point or a power up that we want to throw this could get confusing because the power up's still going to be here uh, we'd also need to account for that and it could also change the scale of things which are being spawned so generally i'm going to avoid doing this kind of the more simple approach i suppose instead what we want to do is we're actually just going to completely rotate them around and we can see with this that we want to do that on the z-axis uh, we're affecting the yule of our character rotation so i'll set this back to zero by default just so that we have like an idea now of what we're aiming for and what we can do we can do this driven by either our input so we already know that we have our move right axis and we can check whether this is more than or less than zero if it's more than zero we're pressing right if it's less than we're pressing left the issue of that is that if we change this whenever the player presses a button it could get a little bit twitchy if the player is pressing constantly so instead i'm going to drive this off of the velocity again so we're going to we'll only change this to 
match how the character is moving in the world. So like with the vertical velocity, we can split this as we're only interested in the X movement speed that we have here. I'm gonna pull from this and we will use a compare so we can get the compare float operator here. And this will be executed. Uh, we can run this from a reroute node to keep this tidy anyway, so we get a nice line here. And in fact, I'll do the same up here, as that's now taking up a bit of space. So I'm just double clicking there if you're not familiar with that. Double clicking on a wire will give you a reroute node. And what we want to do is basically we can check if this is more than a certain value. So if it's a positive value, we're moving right. So we want this to face forward. If it's a negative value, then we're moving left. So if it's more than zero or less than zero, which is our compare with value here, then we're either moving in a positive right or negative left direction. So with that known, we can now set the rotation of the character. Now the safest way to do this, because the player controller is tracking a lot of our rotation updates, uh, we want to get our player controller and we want to set the control rotation of this. So this means that we, because we already have a class which is kind of overviewing and watching the rotation setup of the class, rather than having any kind of conflicting logic against that, we can just use the information which is already being tracked in our player controller and update that. So I'm going to split this and plug this in here. Now, remember we wanted to affect the Yule, the, the Z rotation. The default, so moving right, is correct as it is, so we're going to leave that as zero. We can copy this down here and we can set this to 180 if the character is moving in a leftward direction. So we can test this again. So if I move right, that is happening as we'd expect. And left, that is flipping absolutely everything. So that's a problem with the camera, but that does mean our logic is working. So we're gonna go back to the spring arm. Uh, basically this is happening because like I've just mentioned, all of this is being checked and updated in the controller. And that can also include some of the camera and spring arm setup. So basically what's happening, if you're not sure at the moment, is as we press left, the entire actor is being turned around. The camera is still facing in the same direction, but we're now looking at this from behind the tile map rather than in front. So to stop this happening, we're going to grab our spring arm. We will change this to use the pawn control rotation. So again, this is another benefit of using this player control rotation uh, because some things within our pawn class will be able to reference this. So we now want our spring arm to inherit the same rotation as the controller's tracking, and that means that we don't need to worry about inheriting any of the pitch, yule, and roll. So basically what this meant is if we have these ticked, whenever the component that this is placed on is being moved around, rotated, or anything, so as a quick example, if we bring this into the world, and I'll press F8 here to zoom back out, the we can see here the camera is inheriting the rotation if we move this around. So we don't necessarily, and this would also be if you were kind of rolling your character, if you played an animation at some point, you of course don't want that spring arm follow the same rotation that the character's taking in all of these potential different directions. We always want this to be facing straight on. So what we're going to do is we will untick all of these and make sure that it uh, follows the pawn controller rotation. So that means now that if we press play, you can see that we can turn and uh, move left and right, and the camera's still facing forward because it's updating correctly through the player controller. We have all of our animations going as we would desire. So the final thing, just to tidy up the code, is I'm going to come in, get rid of that uh, comment, and what I think we can do is we could do with putting these in our own functions. So this is taking up a bit of room, um, and we can potentially save a little bit of performance by dropping these into functions as well. So we're going to make use of that. Uh, what I would do is grab all of these nodes, so regarding the movement and the animation, and we'll right click on one of these nodes, We'll collapse this to a function and we will call this update flipbook as that's really what this is responsible for. Okay, so this is where all of our flipbook logic's going. We can see that's now saved us a lot of space in the event graph. Likewise, we can do the same here and we'll change this to update player rotation. So by collapsing that into a function and naming that one update player rotation. And again, just a little bit of tidying so that this is nice and easy to read. We probably won't need these reroute nodes, so I'll just get rid of those. And with that done, we can see we've saved a fair amount of space here. And now it's going to be very easy to jump back through our code. If we want to update the animation, as we're going to do in a moment, we know that we need to look in the flipbook function. And if we ever want to change the way the rotation is working, we can jump straight into our rotation section. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon 
or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.